let's move on because it somewhat pertains uh, to the baby formula yeah, crisis. True. This yes. is about Ukraine. So let's put this up there on the screen. So this is the only article I could find where it talked about the U.S. House passes $40 billion, which actually listed, Crystal, what that actual aid does. Everybody just says $40 billion. Okay, that's a lot of money. What kind of weapons? What is earmarked? Exactly which billion is going where? So here's what they wrote. And I guess VOA is American propaganda, so it kind of makes sense. The package <laughs> includes... Six billion for security assistance, including training equipment, weapons, and support. Eight point seven billion to replenish stocks of existing U.S. equipment sent to Ukraine. Think javelin missiles, those type of things. Then three point nine billion for European command operations. I don't know what that means. In addition, the legislation authorizes a further eleven billion dollars in presidential drawdown authority, which allows the president to authorize the transfer of articles and services from U.S. stocks with without congressional approval in response to an emergency. Biden had only asked for $5 billion. So let that sink in. The president said, I only need $5 billion in discretionary authority to send whatever the hell I want from U.S. military stocks to Ukraine. Congress was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But what if we doubled that and then added an extra billion? So <laughs> what, why don't we to, give you grow $11 billion for you to send, again, without congressional approval, whatever you want? Why does this matter? Because the administration and the president in particular now has the capacity and the congressional authority, if this bill is ratified by the Senate, in order to send offensive style weapons to Ukraine. Now look, he already has a limited ability in order to do that, but Congress has now given him $11 billion worth of military equipment. Think everything that we have, if he so chooses to do so. And now he is the sole discretionary authority over what exactly gets sent over there and not in regards to this particular pool of funds. You cool with that? You wanna put all that power in the man in the hands of a single man? It's not like the president doesn't have enough power. Now, I'll continue. $4 billion in foreign military financing to provide support for Ukraine affected by the crisis. So in effect, we're backstopping some of the loans and other things that they've taken out. And then in addition, the US has rushed $3.5 billion worth of armaments to Ukraine since Ukraine invaded, inclu including howitzers, anti-aircraft stinger systems, anti-tank javelin systems, ammunition, and recently disclosed ghost drones. Again, not a lot of clarity on what exactly those ghost drones are doing. Now, how exactly did the vote on this break down? Let's put this up there on the screen. Well, it went 368 to 57. Now, every single no vote on that bill, Crystal, were Republicans. And I think it really bears noting that not only did not a single Democrat dissent from this, but there was no explanation given to the American people as to why the administration asks for $33 billion to Ukraine and Congress is like, yeah, yeah, but we'll give you 40. Why? Who is this money going to? Who exactly is the beneficiary of this extra oh, we know who the seven? Beneficiary well, we'll get to that. We'll they, get to they're that. They're all here. Right. We're in the beltway. Yes. All the defense contractors that got massively wealthy during the Afghanistan war right. and during every other conflict. We need to ask these questions. And look, I'm not going to say all these 57 Republicans were noble. We have the list. We can put it up there on the screen. I think a lot of them did so for uh, deficit reasons, but hey, look, whatever. Uh, I will say, I actually thought, and it pains me to say this, uh, that one of the better responses on this was actually Marjorie Taylor Greene. So let's put this up there. Uh, here's what she had to say. Let's go to the next one there, guys, which is that she says, in America last, and you know, forgive her rhetoric, $40 billion <laughs> Ukraine first bill we are voting on tonight. There is an authorization for funds to be given to the CIA for who knows what and for who knows how much, but there is no baby formula for American mothers. Now, look, before the inevitable trolls come out, of course it is not a one-to-one -one situation. But to me, it's about what gets default, bipartisan, overwhelming support and billions of dollars of funds with no questions asked, no public debate, et cetera, and what gets talked about on podcasts and online and on Facebook groups amongst millions of new moms and gets no support in Congress. Right. No attention, no statements, so, nothing. So yeah. let me speak to the Democrats yeah. first. It is so pathetic that there not only was there not a single no vote, there was not a, a word of dissent mm -hmm. as far as I could see. And, you know, early on you had at least Ilhan Omar. I think she might have been basically the only one. But raising questions about, hey, guys— Maybe we need to slow down. Maybe we need to actually debate these things because we are going really far and really fast, and I think we should 
press the pause button and actually dig into what we're doing here, what the goals yes, are, right. what the end game is. Not a word of any of that from anyone. And given that we now know the administration's goal is not to achieve peace in Ukraine, it's to quote unquote weaken Russia, which means to keep this war going mm -hmm. indefinitely. Now that we know there are reports that Boris Johnson, when he went to Ukraine, met with Zelensky specifically to say, we do not want a negotiated peace right now. Given all of that, where are the elected voices on the left saying, hey guys, $40 billion for defense contracts and we're just throwing around extra billions and giving $11 billion to Biden to do whatever the hell he wants with it and potentially offensive weapons, which was supposed to be more or yeah, less off right. the table. Like, what are we doing here? Okay, not to mention that... Originally, the idea was this was going to be tied together with COVID money, which was going to go to things which should be uncontroversial, in particular, making sure that people who are poor can still get tested and can still get vaccines, which seems kind of important for a domestic population as well. Well, there was Republican dissent over that, so they put that off the table. So think about what that says. Funding a proxy war against Russia to the tune of multi-billions of tens of billions of dollars is actually less controversial in Congress than making sure that poor people can get a COVID vaccine. Well, yeah. Like, that is mind-boggling. And there was someone on Twitter who mm -hmm. said, basically, Congress is just an arms dealer now. And that's yeah. effectively the case. Now, I do want to say on the Republican side, listen, these people are full of shit. Because ultimately, number one, they didn't want to vote for the COVID, like the stuff that that's would true. go to the population. I don't know what was in the COVID. Thing. Number two, know, like, listen, if we actually had a bill that was like, we're going to give out free baby formula to the population, do you think that these people would actually vote for that? Madison Cawthorn was out there saying, like, imagine if we spent $40 billion on on veterans instead mm -hmm. of doing this. This dude just voted against $20 billion for burn pit victims, like, last month. Right. So oh. let's be clear that on all of this, they're all full of It'd shit. Be good, it'd still be good to put it on. I, I would love to see it put on the floor. I'd love to see them vote against what, it. What, the baby formula? Yeah, I'd be like, yeah, let's, let's, let's do it. Do it. Uh, Go for I, it. I would yes. love to see that get put on the floor. I think what it comes down, look, I support sending weapons to Ukraine, some type of weapons. I support supporting Ukraine. I think that Ukraine's cause is righteous. Now, all of that being said, the reason I'm framing it this way is we need to have debates about grand strategic aims. Now, if the Ukrainians want to continue fighting on, that's great. Now, what exactly are we also doing in terms of ensuring that Congress exercises its constitutional authority to say, well, okay, we support you on this, but we don't want offensive weapons going over there, so why is it not written into the bill that Biden isn't allowed to do that? I mean, why are we not making it so that Congress has an overwhelming and advisory authority on exactly projecting the people's will, which is what Congress is supposed to be, is if most Americans agree we should help out Ukraine. To what end? And this is the problem with I see, which is this is just runaway, which is that they come to us, they're like, we want $33 billion, and we're like, okay, we'll give you $40 billion. Well, where's that, where's that extra money? going. And it's like, this is what Glenn wrote about. Let's put this up there on the screen, which is that Biden wanted $33 billion for Ukraine. Congress quickly raised it to $40 billion. Who benefits? And look, I think we all know who benefits, which is that there is a defense industrial complex here in D.C. And also, you know, this is taking away from a lot of others. You know, some people who talk about Ukraine say that they care about Taiwan. Guess what? Taiwan's been trying to buy weapons for us now for a while, and uh, they're not able to get the weapons that they want because we sent them all to Ukraine. Here's the other problem. We have a semiconductor crisis in this country. Every Javelin anti tac weapon system requires a ton of semiconductors, so much so that the administration is now trying to sell Congress on passing this new semiconductor bill by saying we need these semiconductors to put into our weapon systems so that we can send it over to Ukraine. Now, you don't have to agree with that. I think that's kind of crazy. But the, my point being that we are, you know, we may need these weapons sometime too. What are we going to do? We have enough javelins. By the way, the answer to that is no, uh, because we've sent all of them over to Ukraine. There's all kinds of downstream effects here. And then also when the president sends over existing U.S. military stock, well, then the military has to go buy new ones. So who benefits from that, Crystal? Of like this is what I'm saying. There are all kinds of downstream, you know, very uh, big and nuanced discussions that need to happen whenever it comes to what do we want to do in Ukraine. This is, you know, what? It's been two months now that this has been going on. Ukrainians have fought 
a righteous war. They're gonna, they've battled them in the East. They're keeping them basically, you know, it's a rough stalemate. Now, I'm not saying that hundreds of people aren't dying, that it isn't a tragedy. Where do we go from here? Uh, is flooding the whole country full of weapons, is that a good thing? Is it a bad thing? I don't know. I mean, we should all have independent assessments. And the fact that they just not only rubber stamped it, but gave even more is what troubles me the most. And I, I what I know with war is there's always 40th order consequences. Of course, you know? of course. I mean, how many times do we have to learn that lesson over and over and over again when it comes back to bite the entire world, but also us specifically? I mean, yeah. Glenn points out, isn't it convenient that just as their grift in Afghanistan ends, they get a new, even more lucrative um, funding project for the defense contract. You know, for those of you who are suffering in the market right now, you certainly couldn't couldn't go wrong with uh, yep. buying on, in on Raytheon or uh, Lockheed Martin or one of these defense industrial complex um, machines because ultimately Congress is very reliable in making sure that they have even more funding than ultimately what's requested. Think about the disparity in how this conversation unfolds because if the administration was found to be putting pressure on the Ukrainians to make concessions and negotiate a peace, there would be outrage about yeah, that. I mean, how true. could you? Right. How could you do that? But we know that they're putting pressure effectively on Ukraine to continue the war, to continue fighting, and somehow that's fine. That part, for us to put pressure on them in that direction, because I know people say, oh, well, you know, they, the Ukrainians, they want to keep fighting, they want to keep going. Do you really know that? Because it was someone close to Zelensky who leaked that news mm -hmm. to Ukrainian Pravda, by the way, that Boris Johnson was putting pressure on them to continue the war and to continue fighting. So, yes, listen, Russia is the aggressor in the situation. All of the conversation about NATO and all of that, very clear, like the way that this was ultimately predictable, but they're the ones who are responsible. They're the ones who invaded. None of that is justified whatsoever. Yeah, and they could end it tomorrow if they and, wanted. And they yeah. could end <laughs> it tomorrow, and that is certainly the case. But, yeah. you know, there is there is no— I, I even saw an article where Biden was saying, like, oh, I'm worried that there's no off-ramp for Putin. It's like, what do you think your whole policy of your administration has been? I mean, you all are admitting this outright now. So that's a bigger question is— Right now, the U.S. policy, and this $40 billion is part of this, is to keep war going with Russia. Democratic Congressman Seth Moulton admitting we are basically at war with Russia now. Did you vote for that? Is that what you really wanted our representatives to be doing? Did you, do you want this all to unfold and us keep going further and further and further and further with no public debate about what any of it means, with no accountability whatsoever about who or what this money is ultimately funding? Is that really what you wanted here? Yeah, and I think, look, that is the ultimate question that all of us should ask. And this is Congress, and East specifically the House, the People's House, is supposed to be where the most raucous debates and all that stuff happens. So yeah. when they come in and they're supposed to control the purse, that's what the founders intended. So to have the most direct democracy, democratic body in the world not do that, it's a serious issue. Cable news is ripping us apart, dividing the country, making it impossible to function as a society, and making it impossible to know just what is true and what is false. But the good news is they are failing and they know it. That is why we're building something new, a new mainstream, a healthier one, something more trustworthy, something that we are going to need in one of the most pivotal times in American history. We are building up here for the midterms, for the upcoming presidential election, but we need your help. So if you can help us out by becoming a premium member today at breakingpoints.com, we're trying to change America for the better and the entire world. So what are you waiting for, guys? Go to breakingpoints.com and sign up and help us build a new mainstream.